Welcome to lesson 3b, Submerged Inclined Plate. In this lesson, we look at a submerged flat plate that is inclined from the vertical. We calculate the results in force and its location. We'll do an example problem. In a previous lesson, we discussed a vertical plate of dimensions AB, as shown here. We defined the centroid, where the average pressure acts, P average equal PC, the pressure at the centroid, but the resultant force acts a little below that at the center of pressure. We do the same thing for the inclined plate. Our centroid is there. P average is PC as before, and the resultant force acts at the center of pressure. Notice that for a plate, the resultant force is always perpendicular. Whether the plate is vertical or inclined, FR is perpendicular to the plate and acts at the center of pressure. For either case, FR is equal to P average times A, the area of the plate. In both cases, the liquid is exposed to atmospheric pressure at the top, and P naught is either P atmosphere or zero. We use P atmosphere if we want to work with absolute pressures. We use zero if we work with gauge pressures. Gauge pressure analysis is simpler, so we're always going to do that. This applies to either case, vertical or inclined plate. Previously, we defined S as the distance from the free surface to the top of the plate. We do the same thing here, except that S is tilted at this angle theta. S is parallel to the plate. Again, it's the distance from the surface to the top of the plate. For a rectangular plate, the centroid is located B over 2 from the top of the plate to the centroid. Thus, YC is S plus B over 2 for our vertical rectangular plate. Even though the plate is inclined, in this case, the centroid is still B over 2 from the top of the plate, but we're measuring this parallel to the plate. Again, we define YC from the surface to point C, in this case parallel to the plate. In either case, YC is S plus B over 2, which you can see here and here. For a rectangular plate, A is just AB, and that's true for either case. And P average, for the vertical case, is P naught plus rho G times YC. For the vertical plate, this represents the depth from the surface to point C. For the inclined case, we need to do a little trig, put a right angle there, and this height we'll call HC. HC will be S plus B over 2. That's this distance from the surface to C times sine theta. That's the depth at which we calculate the average pressure, which is the pressure at C. So P average for this inclined case is P naught plus rho G S plus B over 2 sine theta, which comes from here. So really the only difference between vertical plate and the inclined plate is this factor of sine theta. Some comments, if theta is 90 degrees, sine theta is 1, we get the vertical case back. Let's use gauge pressure, where we set P naught to 0. Everything gets simpler. Resultant force is then rho G S plus B over 2 sine theta times the area AB. This is true for the inclined case where theta is not 90 degrees, or the vertical case where theta equal 90 degrees, since sine theta is 1 when theta is 90 degrees. Where is the center of pressure? It turns out that for either case, yp equal yc plus ixxc over yca. That also holds for either the inclined or the vertical case. Keep in mind that this is for the p naught equals 0 case. So the inclined case is not really any more difficult than the vertical case, other than that sine theta factor that appears in a few places. Keep in mind that these y's are measured from the surface parallel to the plate and down towards the plate. Now let's look at the more general case, where we don't have a rectangular plate but some arbitrary shape. We do the same thing, namely y is from the surface parallel to the plate and down. Any depth here is y sine theta. The average pressure is still at the centroid, which is here. The center of pressure is a little bit below the C, and the resultant force is PC times A, as it was before, acting at the center of pressure. Of course, we have to calculate this area as well. We do the same thing with P naught. We'll usually set P naught to zero, because we'll consider gauge pressure. Centroid is the mathematical center of the plate's area, so because of the linear nature of hydrostatic pressure, the average pressure will always occur at the centroid, regardless of the shape of the plate. Of course, the resultant pressure force acts not at C, but at CP, the center of pressure, which is always lower than C. This may help you understand that. We call this a pressure prism, where to get the resultant force, we have to integrate pressure times dA over the whole surface. So for some little element dA, the pressure prism is the pressure acting on that element of area, P naught plus rho GH. 
Since the pressure is lower at the top of the plate than it is near the bottom of the plate, CP is located below the centroid. For plates of any shape, our equations above are still valid, but C and IXXC must be calculated or looked up in some reference tables. You can look at the textbook or the next page for some common shapes. This is from our textbook. We already talked about a rectangle, centroids in the middle, and here's IXXC, AB cubed over 12. For a circle of radius r, area is pi r squared, and ixxc is pi r fourth over 4. And you can see we have these other ones for ellipses, semi-ellipses, semi-circles, and triangles. So to solve these general cases with a non-rectangular plate, we use these equations. yc is 1 over a times the integral of a y dA. For the p naught equals 0 case, which is the simplest case using gauge pressure, p average is p at the centroid equal p at yc equal rho g y c times sine theta, where our notation, again, is that y c is the distance parallel to the plate from the surface to the centroid. I'll use the notation y t c. y t c is y, the distance from the top of the plate to the centroid, as I drew here. Therefore, y c is s plus y t c. You can see that here, s plus this little part gives you y c. We plug this into here, so p averages rho g s plus y t c sine theta. You have to figure out y t c from these geometries. For a semicircle, for example, this would be y t c, and you have to do a little bit of math knowing this location. So f r then is p average times a. Keep in mind that these are gauge pressures when we set p naught equals zero. Finally, the location of the center of pressure is where this resultant force acts. And YCP, or just YP, these mean the same thing, is equal to YC plus IXXC over YCA. Now we're ready to do an example problem. Suppose we have a circular plate embedded into the wall of some kind of a container. We give the depth here H, the radius of the circle R, and theta is 41.5 degrees. Pressure is atmospheric all around, even under this plate. It's a container, so we can ignore p naught and use gauge pressure for convenience. We want to calculate the net force on the plate and the location where this resultant force acts. Well, since it's a circle, the centroid will be at the center. The center of pressure will be lower than that, and that's where FR acts. Using our notation, this is S. This is YTC, which is just equal to the radius, and then YP is the location where this resultant force acts, and that's given by the distance from the surface to CP in the direction of the plate. I'll be a little more careful and use a subscript G for gauge pressure. PG average equal PGC at the centroid equal rho GH, and then the resultant force on the submerged surface, subtracting off atmosphere from both sides, is PG average times A. So that's rho GH times the area since this is a circle, that's simply pi r squared. I can plug in my values, density, gravity, h, and pi r squared. We need only one unity conversion factor. A kilonewton is a thousand kilogram meters per second squared. All the units will cancel except kilonewtons. I get 18.145 kilonewtons. So to three digits, my first answer is 18.1 kilonewtons. Now we want to calculate where that force acts. Well, this distance is yc and h equal yc sine theta. So yc is h over sine theta, and yp from our above equation is yc plus ixxc over yca. We plug in yc and we look up ixxc for a circle, which is pi r to the fourth over four from our table for a circle, and yc in the denominator. And then finally, the area is pi r squared. This simplifies to h over sine theta plus r squared sine theta over 4h, noting that the pi's and two of the r's cancel. So our second answer in variable form is yp equal h over sine theta plus r squared sine theta over 4h. Now we just plug in the numbers to get our answer. yp is 1.80 meters over sine 41.5 degrees plus r squared sine theta over 4h. My calculator gives 2.7466 meters, and my answer to three digits is yp equal 2.75 meters. You'd have to do a little bit of trig here with the sine theta to figure out the height to the center of pressure. This is the distance here to the center of pressure. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.